the Ritu Basketball Radio is live, man. My God, the Equity Hawks, sensational finish to this game, and this was actually quite exciting. I was watching the whole game live uh, when it happened, and I must say it was it was just like you know late game heroics. And uh, without further ado, let me just get into it because uh, as you've seen on the on my Instagram, I make sure to. Um, put the games I make sure to cover all the games and also just give my opinion on it and just to tell you like uh, what I saw in those games and this one will be no different because in the YouTube basketball radio you're seeing you're, you're gonna be seeing majority of the time I'll be you know alternating between going live on YouTube and going live on, live on um, Instagram and I'm gonna try out like you know being consistent on IG because I've seen like um, majority of the time the closest response is coming from Instagram so I'll just make it like um, I'll just make them more frequent so stay tuned to that and man without further ado let me just get into it so the equity Hawks they have been great let me just uh, check if 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 you can hear me let me just let me just see if uh, my sound is being picked up well before we continue before we start because my god there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot of things I just want to say hold on a bit Let me just let me just close up a bit real quick. I was just checking up like uh, just keeping up on the Instagram. I also was checking out the Africa Basket interview uh, where Judith was talking. So let me just you know go there real. Let me just you know exit from that. I was using my phone at the time. So let's uh, let's see if uh, the sound is being picked up. Ah, great, great, great. We are good. We are good. So on the chat, you can see you can find me on the chat as well, and oh, and yeah, I mean the Equity Hawks, they have a two and two record as we speak, and they have, they have been great. They have um you know they have not been able to like beat the top teams in Inter Club and REG, but you've seen what they did to Aspark and Overdose. So going into this game, uh, it is it was a must win game for the Equity Hawks because I believe they had to win this game. They had to make sure to win this game because if they didn't win this game, um, it will end. You know, in, in it wouldn't be a good good look, especially when you know this is a team that was beatable. There were some points in the game where I was just you know shaking my head a bit because I was uh, waiting to see if the Equity Hawks were going to pull the trigger. But every time that they scored. Uh, the other team, the overdose team, kept kept scoring every time. So that thing really, um, that thing really a bit threw me off a bit because I was expecting the Equity Hawks to be able to handle this team well. But I, I, I was expecting even like this game, even before he started, I was I was saying, you know, um, I'll just give the Equity Hawks the benefit benefit of the doubt, considering the fact that they had a rest day yesterday. And given the fact that they had a rest day, like they were fresh legs, and there was the high, you know, uh, I feel like there was a high likelihood they would have blown out this team like the way they did Aspark. But given under the circumstances, um, the Equity Hawks dominated uh, quite so for some time, like for 34 total minutes in this game, and they managed to pull away a bit better. Then the Aspark team had that comeback at the end of the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, it was just back and forth. This game had a total of six lead changes and in the fourth quarter you saw that you know big shot that Judith hit and you know the rest is history and she she actually had a very decent game she had a very good game and this is the game that you know uh, the the rock just you know uh, the basketball gods and, and the rock was just put on her hand so and she played a total of 35 total minutes she has not had like um, good performances like that uh, she she's she has not looked the greatest in the previous games. In the first game, 
uh, against you know Inter Club. She had two points in the second game against Aspark, which they won. Yeah, she had four. In the game that they struggled against REG, she had eight. So she was just trying to find a way she, she can be able to like get into the game. But looking at the way like um, she looked in this game, if um, the Equity Hawks would just at least try to play to some player's strengths and try to switch up a bit because sometimes the offense is just predictable. It's either Debbie Breeze brings the ball up, Melissa has the ball. You're never sure like what to expect from coming from these players. And you can see uh, she had a very good game uh, under the circumstances. And she came up clutch with that, you know, uh, game winner. And that time... I was actually, um, when I just saw that uh, shot from the overdose team just go in, I thought about, like, it's a tie game, it's 73. Even if she, she misses it, uh, the, the game would go to overtime, and I feel like the Equity Hawks will still have won the game. But given, like, the way she was just, you know, playing at the trajectory she was playing, she actually got a double-double in this game with uh, 24 points and 13 boards and 4 assists. So given like the way she was moving that momentum that she was playing with i just knew for a fact that it was just a matter of time she you know uh she would have done that because looking at that last you know uh nine seconds you saw she just ran to the baseline and when i just saw that shot just going as i was watching it live even i i had a live stream uh just looking at the scores on on the on my instagram so when i saw that i i was like you know if it doesn't go in, it's okay. We just go to overtime. If it does, if it goes in, yeah. So, hold on. One. Yeah. So when I just saw her like um, take that shot, I was like, I was just like hoping that shot just goes in. It just goes in, and. It's, it's just um it was just sensational at the time so i mean the equity hawks the equity hawks man like they just had to win this game finishing number three finishing strong you can see inter club they won their game with a blowout uh they were playing against i, I believe they were playing against the aspark team so given like the equity hawks the way they have played i honestly feel um this might be that time when they go to the knockouts and if they meet like those elite teams i'm not just jinxing it but i feel like they can really really literally like struggle a bit when it, when it comes to like playing but given like um even this the players that are on the roster you can see mary lisa in this game she had she didn't have a good game at all she played 11 minutes two points uh shooting wise in in the whole team you could see um i can say we shot a bit a bit better uh from downtown you can see 11 of 34 from downtown and 5 of 11 so judith uh from downtown she was actually quite good uh melissa she's with her normal shooting splits which are uh, quite pathetic uh 3 of 12 from downtown six i mean 3 of 4 from two point field goals she should shoot a bit more mid-range shots than threes because majority of the time I don't know why she sticks on the three and uh, the way she's she misses a lot of threes I, I don't I don't feel comfortable with her you know taking those threes because I don't feel like she can be able to like knock that shot consistently Judith at least she has uh, emerged as a three-point shooter I don't know why Christine she's trying to shoot the three ball and, and she has she has been missing all through Mary Lisa she's tried the three ball Rachel Odiambo she's tried the three ball and it's not working so honestly outside of um outside of you know judith in this game we had also betty she shot you know she shot three of six uh something i'm not accustomed to because she's put up like one of the most inconsistent games that i've seen in the in a while now uh malu grace she had 14 points six rebounds she didn't show up like that much uh betty she had a double level of her own of 17 points 16 rebounds four assists but the six turnovers that she had actually she leads the team in turnovers that's something that i um i don't feel comfortable with when, when she's lead when she's leading the team in turnovers that's uh that's a huge red flag on my book because you can't tell me like you, you are not you know you can't take care of the basketball the majority of the time you can even see the people who turn over the ball at a high rate even Judith, despite her good performance, you could see she had five turnovers in the game. She can't take care of the ball. 
Melissa had five turnovers, Christina Kinyi three, uh, Mary Lisa she had three, and the way she was not even Mary Lisa was not even effective in this game. Mirian she had two. She didn't even contribute anything scoring wise, uh, given the amount of minutes that she was playing. So and she had four rebounds, uh, four rebounds, two assists, plus minus for plus five. So honestly, if you ask me, um, this was just a late game heroics. I guess I can just say it was just um, it was just a game that they couldn't afford to lose. I don't think that they would have lost this game. Uh, given under the circumstances, I feel like you know uh, the elite this equity struggles against elite teams, but not these other teams. And team wise, the equity Hawks shot pretty well, especially from the line. That's one thing that I was looking at a lot. If they couldn't shoot well from the line, that 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 was uh, that was something that I I was really checking on. And considering the fact that oh my god, they only shot four three, only four. Three, Four free throws. Nobody even drew fouls. Judith, there's only Judith and Malu Grace that went to the line the whole game. And I can tell you a reason as to why. The other team, the Overdose Upstation team, uh, they went 10 of 18 from the line. So they had a lot of uh, three, they had a lot, they had a lot of like uh, free throws that they had. And it all comes down to like the turnovers and, and the fouls. So you can see there is no discipline on the team. Even I saw like uh, Coach Benson, he was asked in the press conference like about like that turnover thing because I, ask, I allow like a turnover to happen when there's high pressure on the ball. But unfortunately, sometimes you just see a player dribbling it or even like just passing it out of bounds. And that's one thing that in my book, it's not a good, it's not a good look at all. Because when I look at a turnover, I, I, I look at it as you know, you attempted, let's say, for example, an assist and it got intercepted. That that one I, will, I, will, I would allow if, you know, you are trying to, like, you know, find your teammate. But some of the turnovers I saw during the game were someone just throws the ball out of bounds. You know, uh, a player not even knowing, like, uh, how to, you know, handle the ball and respect the basketball. So that's one of the things that I saw in the game. And even when it came to, like, the assists, okay, we dished the ball pretty well with, like, 25 assists. And and we in defensively we had five blocks. Then when you look at even in the fouls category, like it was just um, it was just a poor showing. Honestly, we had players like Betty. She had four fouls. Malu Grace. She had two fouls. You know personal fouls. They just keep you know stacking up. And those that those are the fouls that uh, take us out of the game. And 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 those crucial possessions just run away from us. And honestly. Sometimes I, I, I just ask myself, like, um, why is it that we can't be able to, like, you know, take care of the basketball? Why is it that we can't, like, find a way to consistently, you know, take care of the basketball and make, you know, good IQ plays? I know in a couple of posts I've said, like, I've questioned the IQ of the players and sometimes it can be, come off, like, you know, uh, taking shots. But honestly, if you look at the whole game in, in its totality, you have seen you're going to uh, witness a lot of low IQ plays, especially coming over from the team captain. I don't like the team captain when she just jacks up threes, unnecessary threes, with not even calculated, not even thought of. You just see her just pulling from three just because the shot clock is expiring, and not even like uh, having, even not even like seeing even the coach like drop plays. I I don't know if they they have their own plays because I feel like Judith just had the hot hand, and. She just got. She just goes to her sports, and she had played heavy minutes. So, if you compare her performance with another player like Debbie, Debbie was uh, played twenty one minutes. She has zero points. She didn't even attempt a single shot. None. She didn't even attempt a single shot. She only had one a rebound, one rebound, and two assists. So you can see, like, clearly, she was just rendered unplayable and effect ineffective. At DNP, we had a burial. Uh, number 17, Barry Lacoth, she was a DNP, she didn't play anything. Uh, Marianne, she she didn't even know, like, uh, she couldn't even get into, into the game, she did virtually nothing. Mary Lisa, uh, yet to see what she has produced, contributed to this team. I don't know why people um, uh, <laughs> gas this lady up. Mary Lisa has not even shown that she can be able to, like, you know, uh, contribute at this level. Okay, she, she contributed in Zone 5, but unfortunately, uh, the team passed on five and now it's continental so in continental affairs 
the, only, the ball only goes to the person who can produce the most. And given like some, some majority of the players can't even produce anything. Like uh, you can see Debbie, 21 minutes played, just a wasted possession. Like just wasted minutes, honestly. I look at I look at the star sheet and it just tells me everything I need to know. And considering the fact that I watched the whole game, I just know everything that just happened. So when I just rewatched the game, when I was watching the game, even when I was watching the game live, then I just look at the star sheet. I mean, I just sometimes I just go back and just cringe because it's the same thing. Like thirty turnovers. That's something that even the coach cannot even explain because even when he got pressed in the in the presser. Like, you know, he couldn't even explain it. And I don't even think, like, he even addresses it. I feel like the coach is, you know, he's just, you know, uh, he's a yes man in there. I feel like the coach is a yes man. He cannot address this thing. He's just, you know, uh, sugarcoating it. I know he can't address the players directly. Even when they go to the timeout, I'm pretty sure he's not going to, you know, address it head on. Because if he did address it head on, we'll have seen a bit of change. Because the team is averaging north of 20 turnovers per game. Uh, and and given like the way we looked, the way the Equity Hawks looked in the RAG game, uh, not encouraging at all. And given like uh, the way in the knockout phase where you know you're miss, you're facing like the top three teams by per group, I just predict Equity are just gonna go out with an early exit. Even despite you know the late game heroics by Judith, if the team just continues to carry on like this, I don't think uh, there will be any there'll be any like you know any different just be like you know let's say for example a, we, the the equity hawks meet a team like you know a sporting reg they meet kpa it's just going to be a whitewash and even like even in the kpa game i'll be like you know it's just a domestic affair that one and i just know it for a fact kpa just going to beat them and if 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 you even consider the fact that like you know proceeding into the knockout phase that one will show us everything that we need to know because you will see all the flaws being magnified and exposed. You can see what Inter Club and REG did to the Equity Hawks. They literally exposed them completely. And looking at the way uh, the game is just progressing, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not confident in the Equity Hawks, honestly. Even given like the late game heroics, they wouldn't be late game heroics or even a game winner if they didn't, you know, turn over the ball aimlessly. Yeah, not even paying attention to like you know uh, key possessions uh, late in the game and not even having like a you know a structure on the offense because majority of the time it's just freestyle basketball just sideways passing you know uh, just you know passing out in the perimeter no one is advancing the ball they're just waiting for like you know second chance opportunities they don't know they're not going into like for the kill for like first chance opportunities there's no like you know quality ball handlers you're seeing a lady like Debbie she's old i know she she can't dribble the ball melissa you cannot you cannot count on <clears throat> melissa to be able to even you know beat beat her player beat beat like a, a guard in there so honestly it's just um just a sad game it's just a sad, a sad thing to see sad sad indeed but anyway just hoping to see what type of basketball they're going to produce uh given like that's given that that situation right now i'm not confident that much right now i'm just waiting for that a sporting a sporting versus kpa game I had gone, uh, admitted a bit. I know right now the equity also just in cloud nine. I'm just seeing posts from the Africa Basket page. They're just, you know, showing like uh, the reaction inside the locker room. I know they can use, they'll just go ahead and just use this to mask like everything. But we all know the truth. Uh, this is a team that uh, as currently constructed, I don't think like uh, they can be able to like even make it the semis. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure because they they can't even beat like um 
this is a team that can't beat like an elite team. You saw what a RG and Inter Club did to Equity, and the only they can only beat like you know a below average team. So, and uh, as uh, statistically, the overdose team are just a below average team. So, if you ask me, I, I don't. Um, I, I I have nothing against like the Equity Hawks, but I just feel like you know under the circumstances, they can't beat a be a, a good team, a team that can play offense and defense. They can't beat that. You saw some you know flaws that uh, the overdose team exposed. They exposed like you know uh, defense, especially late in the game. You can see the Equity Hawks were just a bit you know flat-footed. They're not. They didn't even know like um, what they're supposed to do in there. And given those, given that situ- given that late game situation, they shouldn't have blown a lead like that. They shouldn't have blown a lead like that. And yeah, man, they're just going, they're just going to face like the top three teams in part by, by the groups in the knockout phases. So I'll just be uh, <laughs> be playing close attention to that on this channel and also uh, and also on YouTube too. So, because I'm just going to come out with a video just talking about this game in depth on my YouTube channel, and also put the video on Instagram. So, if you if you're going to be you know tuned into that, I'll make sure you know check that out. I also released a video um, 